Welcome back to another video. Got a new gas tank for the pickup truck. I bought the wrong one the first going. It was the 17 gallon. So it was like out to here. That would work because the axle is in the way. So I got this one. This one is actually more expensive. It was 220 versus the other one, which was bigger, was 140. Why? Why? But whatever. So the front's mounted up. I have to weld another nut on there because I had to grind it off to get the old one out. And then the back, we have to build a bracket to connect it to this cross member. Couldn't get this one off from the original tank, so just lopped it off. Not gonna make a bracket like that. Just a simple L bracket with a little angle on it. Shouldn't be terrible. Show our cardboard demonstration. Oh, sure. So we got this piece of cardboard kind of represents our plate here. We're trying to figure out how to make this bracket because you can see from the back that angle is pretty. Oh yeah, it's not just pretty straight. dumb. And we don't have a brake here, so we're gonna bend it like a vice, I assume. Wait, we don't even have a vice here. No. Cool. So yeah. that's really fun. Yeah. So our idea was to, you know, put the 90 on it, kind of put the holes in it, bolt it up to the tank, and then just go across this bar and just lop it off straight, so you get a straight cut here so it looks like we did it the right way yeah that'll be fine yeah it'll be good we'll be fine and if there's any fabricators watching it you know you can make fun of us we don't know what we're doing shout out jason you're the man yeah <laughs> i hope you watch this <laughs> this sucker on the snowblower with some vice grips. Mark the line. Uh, if you actually look down this, like it's not totally straight with the bar, so you do have to take into account that, you know, if this was straight like this, there'd be a big gap there, so, but that's fine. We can just, just make it like this. We made the flange longer and then cut it off straight at the end, but. We don't waste material around here. No, sure. So I'm gonna drill the holes in the bottom there and then uh, mount it up and then just see how it sits on the bar. And if it sits up against this decent enough, then we'll just cut that and weld that on. I saw that arc. That a whole, oh, sorry, I stuck there at the end. Yeah. It's not bad. It's really yeah, not I'll bad. I'll just break off. Yeah, all at once. Yeah. You show my sweet TIG welds with my dirty tungsten. We tried. Stuck the tungsten though. Yeah, immediately. We only have one, one tungsten. I've never TIG welded with my knee before. Yeah. Insert the clip here. Oh. I'll send it to you. So for those people who don't know, explain what you're doing with that dolly. Oh, I'm, I'm tapping this down in there so this root gap isn't so big. Probably doesn't really matter that much to big welding it, but TIG welding now is having a hard time. How big that gap is there and pounding it closed. It's fairly tight. Yeah, good enough. Yeah. I think. I'm no professional. It's welding pretty decent. Got the gas tank hanger welded in. Next, we'll be stripping this frame and um, get it ready for the POR 15. 
Okay, so initial thoughts using the, uh, the stripping tool here. It's got a 40 grit abrasive wheel on it. Spinning at about 4,000 RPM. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does pretty good. Obviously, it doesn't really get into the pits. Um, but it cleans the surface pretty good <laughs> where there's no rust. Uh, and then the sandblasted side, obviously. Left it nice and bright. Uh, so I think I'm gonna just keep going on with the wheel here and then any real bad spots I can't get with the wheel, I'll just end up sandblasting in here. Close the curtain and just let it go for a bit. So I figured out the degreaser that's supposed to be used for the POR15 is a water-based product. So once you spray it on there, you're supposed to hose it all off. Well, I don't have a water hookup out here to the shop, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with that, but we'll figure something out, I guess. So I'm gonna set up a little time-lapse. I'm gonna keep stripping. Got the frame blasted, uh, stripped and cleaned up pretty much best as I could do here. Uh, so now I have it outside and we're going to spray it down with the cleaner degreaser. I got this, it's already got the markings on it which is nice otherwise you can totally use something along the lines like this, a regular mixing cup. So I'm gonna mix that up. So I'm going to mix that up, uh, fill this, and then spray it down, scrub it really good, and then you actually have to hose it all off. So once I think I got it nice and clean, then we'll hose it off, and then we'll move on to the next part, which is the metal prep. So I'm just going to have to uh, kind of soak down a little, bar little bit by a little bit here because I got the whole frame to spray, so I'll scrub this down, then I'll keep moving along, and uh, we'll just keep working it. I got this pretty tough bristle brush here. Should do the trick, I think. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over the whole frame here, and then uh, wash it off, and then we'll move on to the metal prep. All right, I just finished spraying it down with water after I degreased everything. So now I got this bad boy from Menards. It was like 10 bucks. I was reading it and it doesn't look like you diluted it at all. So it's just straight up. So I'll throw it in this thing. Um, it says you have to keep it wet for 10 to 20 minutes. So I'll probably set a timer then uh, rinse it off with water. And then it has to be completely bone dry uh, before you can install the POR15 top coat. Okay, uh, everything is prepped out now. Uh, it's all dried off. I just used the air blower, blew it off pretty good. Uh, took a towel, got any other damp spots. Now I'm going to put it in a separate container so that there is no contamination going back into the original can so I can reuse it later. So put that into a cup and then uh, just brush it on. Uh, it says one thin coat and then that dries between two to six hours and then you can apply another coat once, uh, once the first one's dry. You're supposed to be able to kind of rub it with your finger and not stick to your finger but still slightly tacky, like you can kind of drag it a little bit, if that makes any sense. So I'll be applying the first coat and then uh, we'll let that dry and I'll go ahead and apply the second one.
that'll be it for this video. We got all the uh, frame prepped and painted. It's all good to go now. So in the next video, hopefully we can make it roller and be done. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.